here are three reasons why I think the Bamboo A1 Mini could just be the absolute best beginner printer. I've had the A1 Mini for about six months now and I'm not ashamed to admit I may actually use it more than any of my other printers. I don't believe in it. <laughs> I currently have nine 3D printers and not all of them are really worth owning as I've said in some of my other videos. I also have access to quite a few other printers, including the newest Bamboo A1. But for beginners, even experienced users, I really think the A1 Mini can't be beat. And here's why. Reason number one, it's easy. And I don't mean just printing, I mean everything about this printer. When I first set it up, even though I was checking every little thing about it out so I could, you know, let you know about it, I still only needed about 20 minutes before it was ready to go. Now the AMS light unit, it's a little bit daunting at first, mainly all these cables and everything, but it works out really well. And as far as I've been able to tell, it doesn't matter which PTFE tube goes where, it's all controlled by the motor running each spool. And adding spools of filament is just a breeze. It's really cool to be able to see a little more of what's going on with each filament as it gets pulled through all those extruder tubes. Remembering the name, A1 Mini, the build plate is only 180 millimeters cubed, but as long as I keep it clean, I can really print a lot of models. I mean, I'm not gonna print a full-size Mandalorian helmet, you know, for me at least, but yeah, I could chop it up into little small pieces, but that's not really what this printer is for. There are so many models out there that fit on this printer. It doesn't matter if they need supports or a brim. For the most part, they just print. And that's all because of the built-in calibration. And that leads us directly into reason number two. It's dependable. When it comes to beginners and, well, just about anything new, dependability is key. And those calibration tests I just talked about being so easy, well, that's a huge part of this printer's dependability factor. The initial setup includes vibration compensation, which actually sounds like a jet engine winding up when it gets going, but it's testing the table or desk or whatever you have your printer setting on. Once it's complete, it'll have a really good idea of how things are gonna move around, and the printer and the components will then compensate for all those movements to give you the best print possible. I personally leave the calibration settings on for each print, so it runs a quick test before every one, but they do add a few minutes to your overall time. Worth it. It's a no-brainer. Now, I've only had a few real issues with my first layer occasionally, but almost every issue I did have was either a dirty build plate or the filament setting or something that I've done. Bamboo Studio does a great job of controlling those settings for you, so if you're not ready to tinker around with any of that, for the most part, you can just leave them alone. Changing your quality settings to adjust the line height and the print precision, that's definitely something you're gonna wanna look into. And Bamboo's always adding new filaments to their lineup, so if your filament isn't listed, uh, just keep checking back, but you can switch yours over now to just the generic setting. Now just so you know, I have used the bamboo filament settings for most of the filaments, but it seems like that's where I kind of run into some issues. The spools from bamboo have an RFID chip that the AMS picks up on and it adjusts the settings for each one of those. But things like flow rate compensation, other settings, those don't always match up. The generic filament setting, that gives you a pretty broad spectrum for all those settings and that just gives you the best chance at a great print. And after all that, we have reason number three, price. Price is probably the first thing a new 3D printer owner will look at. Unfortunately, it should probably be the last, which is why I put it as number three. There are plenty of cheap 3D printers out there on the market, and I do mean cheap. And while you may get a few prints out of them, the frustration level, it's gonna most likely outweigh any enjoyment you might get from them. Relatively speaking though, for a modest investment, you can get a great 3D printing experience with this A1 Mini, which by the way, just so you know, this is my own printer, no sponsors involved. The current price for the A1 Mini without the AMS light unit is right at $299. 
And so when you compare that to the Ender 3 series, which is a great beginner 3D printer, you'll spend about $100 more for this printer. And although the Ender 3 has a slightly larger build plate and an automatic bed leveling system, the A1 Mini has a lot more to offer to make up for that price and that size. The fact that you can buy it without the AMS light unit, that's a great option. And that way you can get comfortable with everything about the AMS One Mini and have fun without the extra cost. But then when you're ready to give multicolor printing a try, you can add the AMS light on for about $249. As I pointed out, the ease of use, the dependability, all of that is just really unparalleled among 3D printers. There's really not many printers out there where you can almost guarantee a good print every single time. And I'm not saying this will do that, no printer can, but sometimes it just really feels that way. I've had a couple of filament jams in the PTFE tube going down into the hot end, and every single time it was due to a filament that I would left sitting out there for a while. Which actually points out probably my personal biggest issue. That's this AMS light unit and the fact that the spools and the filament are just wide open. Now there are some really great looking add-ons for the A1 Mini out there and I'm really excited about one in particular and it's a cover for the filament spools. My only worry though is that unless I plan to just use those particular four colors for a while, it may get a little annoying having to go in and out, but still, you know, better than filament problems. Well, if you have some add-ons or tips about the A1 Mini, please drop a note and a link in the comments section for all of us to find. And I'll also have all my info there as well, along with links to any other add-ons I may have found. My goal with this video isn't to promote bamboo. I just wanted to give you my honest information about what I think is a great printer after having it for six months. And no matter what 3D printer you get, keep checking back with me in the lab as we all learn, create, and amaze.